Hello, hello, and welcome back for the beginning of the end, as the mobile infantry and I prepare to head in to do some bugs, sir, in XCOM 2. And when I mentioned killing bugs in the beginning of the end, it wasn't a very vague reference to the 1957 Burt I. Gordon classic, The Beginning of the End, starring Peter Graves, in which giant grasshoppers attack and devour a big chunk of Chicago. Oh, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't mind if I had a plucky female reporter Peggy Castle by my side for this assault, because not only would she get the scoop, but she'd also help save the day and help celebrate the victory afterward with some hot, naked, sweaty, horizontal mambo action. It'd be pretty sweet. Because apparently, if I take a lesson away from every 50s movie ever, the, the lesson is women only exist to serve as a reward for a heroic male. That's pretty much all they're good for. Man goes out, does a thing, becomes a hero, gets a girl, bam, that's just how it works, that's the formula. Women don't exist outside of being rewards, according to the 50s at any rate. And that's even if the only thing the hero does is clean up his own mess, too, because Peter Graves got the girl in that movie after saving Chicago, but the only reason Chicago actually needed saving is because Peter Graves irradiated the grasshoppers and made them big enough to destroy it in the first place. Really doesn't seem like the kind of thing one should get ace reporter Peggy Castle for. She deserved better than a loser like Peter Graves. She really did. Anyway, this has gotten off track. We're, we're coming down to the close to the end of this is sort of what I was getting at. And I should probably stop picking on Bert I. Gordon for his gender stereotyping and gender roles. In his defense, I mean, he did have Peggy out doing stuff instead of just being at home chained to a stove raising some kids. She was still ultimately sort of a subservient second-class citizen, but I should probably give Bert I. Gordon for credit for at least trying to break down some gender barriers even if ultimately he only reinforced the damsel in distress stereotype. He tried. I mean, he, that's a noble thing. Sometimes you try and a lot of times you fail. We'll probably fail in this final mission ourselves. So, you know, shouldn't be picking on Bird Eye Gordon, I guess. Anyway, before we do our final mission, we do have... Okay. Yeah, I know. Alien infiltrators. Alien, yeah, they're on every mission now. It's fine. We got completely fucked last mission, I'd like to point out. Commander, I really feel like we won the last mission, but didn't get credit for the win. Project. Kind of a last-ditch kick in the dick from the aliens, I think. Fast. Some desperate flailing as they die. There is one thing we do have to complete, though. I want to get the sectopod breakdown finished, and I want to make sure that all of our ace troopers are back in full fighting trim. So we are going to head over. Also, we didn't get our intelligence for last mission, so we need to go do that as well. So we're going to head back to Resistance HQ. Grind some time, complete this sectopod autopsy, and just try to pick up some intel as well. Ace reporter Peggy Castle would really be helpful in picking up the intel. She'd get the scoop. Also, why is it in the 50s that, like, the plucky dame and, like, the arguable heroine in a film, even though they were usually there to serve as, like, a, a, a helpful hand to some male hero? I'm really picking on the 50s for their gender stereotyping. Anyway. But, uh, why, why were they always reporters? Uh, what, what was the deal with that? The, the plucky female was always a reporter. Avatar Project has made a major breakthrough. I find I don't really give much of a shit about that. I mean, whoopee. The Avatar Project isn't anywhere near coming to completion. But the, back to the reporter thing. The yeah, it's fine, Bradford. Uh -huh. yeah, do, do I look worried, Bradford? Look at my face right now. Do I look concerned? Even a little. Yeah, you bet your ass I don't. I blame Lois Lane for the whole female reporter thing because I guess she was like the first one. I don't know. It seems like it got shanghaied into a whole trope there. It's probably Superman's fault. And you're out there right now probably saying, Oh, Pete, any chance to hate on Superman? Yeah, you're goddamn right. Any chance I can find. Fucking hate Superman. We did finish the sectopod breakdown, so Dr. Tigan's life goal of Cream in the 16 is now complete. He has fucked every single alien that we've ever seen. Congratulations, Dr. Tigan. Now I guess you're uh, stuck answering a question, what do you do when all your dreams come true? I mean, what else is there for Dr. Ooh, never mind. Fuck Dr. Tigan's dreams for the future. I don't care what he does with himself. He can go hang himself in a closet at this point. Ah, uh, the Gremlin Mark III. So we definitely want that. Significantly increasing the hacking stat of all specialists. Hells yeah, we definitely want that. Yeah. All right, so I guess we go to engineering and build that. Build items. Um, is it a weapon? It is a weapon. All right, yeah, well, do that. I don't care the cost. At this point, it doesn't matter. We're just waiting for intelligence. Which, how much do we have? 144. That's not enough. I think we needed 149. So we're going to have to go at least one more pip here. There we go. All right, that's enough. That's it. Stop. Stop scanning, please. 
163 is definitely enough. So this is it then. Let's do it. Advent Network Tower. Okay, one last thing to check. Just double check. I don't want to be going in with wounded troopers. Got to make sure everybody's on board here, right? Nobody's hurt. I mean, Kitten Smith is shaking, but that guy's been suffering from PTSD since a long time ago. We haven't even taken him on a mission in probably weeks. He's really got it bad. I'm sorry. Once this is all over, Kitten, rest assured, I'm going to get you some counseling. I'm going to get you the help you need. We'll get you back out there fighting fit, buddy. Don't worry. Let's do this. I am going to take, I think we can take, all right, so you're what, 41, 35, 76, 151, yeah, all right, so what are we going to get here? Each member starts the mission individually concealed, seems amazing. Squad Blitz, I, it, it's fantastic, everybody can run and gun once. Integrated comms, everybody has squad sight, and everybody gets 15 aim and 20, oh, everybody gets 15 aim and bonus crit. That's real good! I mean, that's stupefyingly good. Actually, that... Mm, yeah, we're fine. Do it. So this is it. I'm clicking the button. I'm irradiating the grasshoppers, and after this point, it's just a matter of uh, flicking them off the postcards that we used to become Chicago, which was, by the way, how Bert I. Gordon shot the special effects for the beginning of the end. It was grasshoppers climbing up postcards that had pictures of Chicago buildings on it. Let's do it. Here come the hoppers. Turn loose the grasshoppers. Funny thing, too, about uh, the beginning of the end. Bird Eye Gordon only had 12 grasshoppers when he shot that movie. So every grasshopper you see devouring Chicago is one of 12. We're going to infiltrate the Advent I beg your pardon? I have three troopers? Try to draw less attention to ourselves than we already what the do. shit is this? How am I supposed to do this with three people? I gotta kill nine aliens with three dudes, huh? All right, well, this is going to be monumentally difficult then. So, Dizzy, as amazing as you've been, you can't be one of my people. I'm sorry. You can't be Dizzy. Seth Padre Gilliam, yes. I, th I think is a def uh, Would we rather? Yeah, you know what? It's it's either uh, Amy Smart is real good too, though. Oh, this is, uh, again, I'm, I'm fucking Meryl Streep here. We got to have, you know what? What we really should do is make it the, the three amigos. It should be Seth. It should be... Yeah. Well, I mean, Jake Busey's absolutely going. There's no way we're going to get through this without Jake Busey. Jake Busey, Johnny Rico, Seth... It should be the three amigos, but I don't want to take his because I don't, I don't think we'll have the tools we need. It's either going to be Seth Gilliam or Amy Smart. I'm just having a very difficult time deciding which... They're both so good. I'm sorry, Seth. The three amigos goes boy, boy, girl. That's the way it is. And since the girl can't be... Oh, you know who it should be? It should be Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. You know what? This is the all boy band version of the three amigos. We're getting rid of that med kit, Neil. We're going to need something a little more useful from you. Uh, you already have a mimic beacon. Some kind of special bullet might be in order here. Let's make utility items available very quickly. We, yeah, we gotta take Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, we can't not. As much as I would love to have a Grenadier here, I honestly think the Grenadier is the wrong choice. What kind of bullets would be best for you? Blue screen rounds, absolutely. This way you have something you can do to robots. That makes you a robot hunter. Johnny Rico's got explosions, so if we need cover destruction, we do have the blaster launcher in a pinch. And we also have the proximity mine for one really powerful ambush. We gotta kill nine people. This is my team. They can. I got faith. You guys, I have faith in you. Do it. The opportunity to turn two enemies to our advantage, too, or possibly a turret. We could dominate one. We could get some mind control, maybe with a void rift. And also, if we find a robotic enemy, Casper Van Dien could hack it. I mean, theoretically, he can always try. Casper Van Dien's hacking abilities have not been great. And you know what? We're going to Operation Bone Valley. Seems appropriate we took an all-male team. Here I am trying to get gender equality and picking on Bert I. Gordon for, you know, not making the strongest female characters. And then what do I do? Go on an important mission and the first thing I say is, no girls. <sighs> I'm like every one of the little rascals. Except for the one that was in love with Darla. I don't know, Spanky? Was he the one that liked Darla? I forget. Everybody hated Darla except for one of them. Who was like the leader. Why am I making references to the little rascals? Nobody even knows who they are anymore, Pete. No one saw the little rascals. 
At this point, the remake of the Little Rascals movie that they did in the early 90s is already too old for anybody. Ugh. Okay, I'm an old man. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's long and the short of it. I'm real old. Let's go to Operation Bone Valley and see if we can do the boning instead of get the boning. The remake of the Little Mas Rascals, by the way. Gotta rank among mankind's most awful crimes. And I really feel like maybe I overspent on intelligence here. Then again, it's nine guys. We have nine enemies. Okay, so an Archon and a Codex back there. Are we on a time? Do we have a time frame here? We do not appear to have a time frame. That's a lot of concealment. So flip, 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 flip. So we have like a group based concealment, but then an individual concealment. Everybody should be greasy fast here because we do have the bonus for enhanced speed while concealed. All right. Well, there is no turn timer either, and we can evac from this mission. Uh, Jake? Just gonna move, buddy. Thank you. Clicking the button here. All right, so no enemies in sight. Neil Patrick Harris. I really wish Neil Patrick was just a little bit quicker. And Johnny Rico then is going to be up here. No misclicks here. Hey, XCOM, none of this bullshit. No misclickery. I'm not having any of that crap. People dashing through the aura around Neil Patrick Harris is, is, is funny. What do we got? An Andromedon and a Codex. Okay, we can't mind control either of those, or can we? Can we mind control an Andromedon? There's also another Andromedon in there. Ugh, this... Okay, that's, that's sort of shitty. Can we mind control an Andromedon? If I'm going to dominate something... Sorry, 76% chance to take control of an Andromedon. That would be a supremely powerful asset. Andromedon, real good. We could. Oh, the other thing we could do is we could try and take down the Andromedon. Well, can we? What can we mind control the Codex? Oh, we could mind control a Codex. Oh, that's so tempting. I mean, we almost have to try this, right? Or we could drop a Void Ref on them. Is this how we want to reveal ourselves? Just straight up go up to the enemy and throw a Void Rift at them? Is that the best possible strategy? Is it even a good strategy? Is it a terrible strategy? Well, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to be in full cover. So, Neil Patrick Harris, we're going to move you over here. Put you on the fucking edge of oblivion, quite literally. You know what? Screw it. Let's go for the Void Rift. There's, there's possibly another person back here, and I, I thought I heard them walking. Maybe another Andromedon. I'm surprisingly okay with this. Let's throw the void. Uh, excuse me, void rift. Can you can you drop the void rift, please? Yes, I want to. I want to use void rift. What is going on? Why can't Why can't I do this? Okay, hold on. We've got some. Oh, great. Now I've got some weird interface issues. Drop a void rift right there. Why can I not drop a void rift? It will not let me do a Void Rift. Why? Can I not do that while concealed or something? Oh, is it because of Squad Sight? No, because neither one of those are Squad Sight shots. I can straight up see both of those people. What the shit is going on here? Alright, now I'm a little salty. Alright, Casper Van Dien, that is not cover of any kind. We'll come back to you. So that leaves us Jake Busey and Casper Van Dien. I don't want to use my... Do, or do I? I mean, if we're... All right, you know what? I was going to say I don't want to use my proximity mine, but if I'm... I can't do anything. What the hell is going on? None of these squares are friggin' clickable. Understood. Moving out. Was that the problem? Was it, like, some kind of elevation thing where I was trying to drop a void rift, like, 30 stories down? If I can drop it now, I'm going to be a little salty. Yep, that's, in fact, actually what it was. The, for whatever reason, I was targeting, like, four stories below us. All right, so we got some damage out of that, but this is the important part. Let's see what follow-up abilities. Come on, Neil Patrick Harris. You got to give me some of the goods here. You got to give me something good. That's what we needed. All right, so you're disoriented and ruptured, so that's good. She's insane. That means no psychic powers for you. 
What are you giving me on the Andromedon? Give me the mind control, baby. Give me the mind control. Oh, what did you get? You are panicked. Let's see how he reacts to this panic. Man. Right, so the Codex is running forward like an idiot. The Andromedon is running away to full cover and shooting the Codex in the back. Oh, shooting something way over there and missing. I have no idea what he shot at. So Jake Busey kills this Codex, no problem. That leaves Casper the friendly ghost Van Dien needing something to do. Honestly, we might just have him... Actually, he kills the Codex even if he misses with his stock. I'm shockingly okay with that. We're going to bring you over here. We're going to have you just take a shot at the old Codex. This is a dead Codex whether he hits or misses. Whether the roll is a hit or a miss. So he missed, but still got the damage done. The two damage from his stock coupling with the rupture to get him some bonus damage. And that leaves Jake Busey with an opportunity for further infiltration. I think Jake Busey, we're going to leave him cloaked up because I want to see what kind of enemies are over here. This Andromedon did some of our work for us taking a shot at these guys. I'm curious how they'll react. Okay, you're still panicked, so why don't you just sit there like an asshole? Good. You got that covered. All right, the asshole sitting. Nice. What are these guys? Those guys don't seem to give a shit that one of their friends just took a poke at him. They're like, ah, you know, old Johnny once in a while as you're passing by, he'll just randomly take a shot at you. He's wacky like that. That guy, I tell you. Oh, he's a crazy cat. The hijinks that man gets up to, oh, you wouldn't believe him. What a, what a funny guy. So is there any way we can get over here to throw... proximity mine at those people without giving ourselves away. And we could get up on the roof, but we get spot. I actually don't want to be on the roof. Can I just come over here? Why am I getting... Am I just close enough that they can see me in that tile? What if I just run to this tile? Moving to position. We should still be concealed here. That's actually quite beautiful. Alright, so here's what we're going to do then. Proximity mine for these guys. Enjoy that. So we're going to just go ahead and toss that over there. That's got Jake Busey sorted. Our Andromedon friend is panicked, but we're going to try and kill him if we can. He should stay panicked for one more turn. I don't really like Neil Patrick Harris's position. What's your hit percentage like here? Very bad. And we sort of need a kill out of you. What about a null lance? Is that going to be enough? 9 to 14. Through his armor, it's actually not enough damage. How much health does he have? More than we're going to be able to get in a single turn. Which is problematic. If we kill him... Okay, you know what? This actually is not a bad thing. Here's what we'll do. We're going to go for the Null Lance and Rupture his cover. We actually don't want to kill the Andromedon this turn. It's still going to be... Okay, well, I mean, thanks, Neil. That's not at all what I needed, but okay. So our goal was to not kill it. Neil Patrick Harris immediately is like, well, fuck that, I'm killing it. Nice work. Now it's going to be up to us to go for the Haywire Protocol to try and keep you alive, Neil Patrick Harris. Very glad that the damage ticker, by the way, lied to me in the amount of actual damage that's going to be done. The problem is now that this guy, since we killed him, he's not panicked. We could just straight up shut him down. Uh, you know what? No, we can't risk having... I, I just... I'm sorry, Johnny Rico, I can't trust you. We're going to shut him down. It's a damn good thing we gave minimal amounts of trust to Johnny Rico. You never trust Johnny Rico. Rico's rough next, yeah. So we're just going to shut down the robot. Then. Done. So he's down for another two turns. We got nothing to worry about. We also should still have an action, correct? Nope. Damn, so the Dramadon goes through one turn. He's shut down for one more turn. These guys should set off a proximity mine and completely fuck themselves. Nice little activation. Or are they just going to stand there? Honestly, having them just stand there is better for me, so they'll eventually explode when they get around to moving again, but until that happens, I'm, I'm okay with that. Actually, if we come over here, rapid fire this guy. What is up with the... Uh, XCOM, why is your final mission always a goddamn train wreck when it comes towards moving and shit? 
you, you always make the last maps, oh, it's got to be big and fucking amazing, okay. and we got to make it dynamic, so it feels really important. And I understand that proclivity, but if you're going to do that, you know what the most important part of that is? Make the goddamn map actually fucking work as well. Make it not a misclick nightmare. This always happens in the final confrontation in XCOM, apparently. The, the temple ship was a goddamn histronic nightmare of awful. It's misclick central. Big Busey has revealed himself, but that's okay, because these guys in there revealing are going to... Yeah, I was going to say, do a lot of damage to themselves. The Codex is basically already dead, and that Andromedon is in real deep shit, and Jake Busey can move again if we need him to, although he's in a uh, he actually pretty good position. All right, Neil, you know what? You may just chill for a minute. If you can get vision on the Codex, which you have squad sight, so you should be able to, let's take you to here. And our best bet, really, I mean, this doesn't actually it doesn't even matter if we hit it or not. This Codex is dead. We're going to get at least two damage out of Johnny's stock. So, yeah, you're dead. Actually, Johnny hit and critical. 13 damage. That was... Impressed yet? Well, I mean, no. Not really, Johnny Rico. Maybe a little. Oh, we got a free action from our hair trigger. Hey, nice. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a shot at the Andromedon, too, then. If you could kill that, that'd be beautiful. And nine damage. Not dead, but very badly injured. If we can get him into oh, gauze gosh. at the enemy mode, that'd be fine. We could run and gun... Can we see this guy from this tile? That's what I need to know. Are we going to be able to see you from here? I, I can't tell, even fully zoomed out. Can I see you from this tile, even though it's shitty cover? The answer is no. I would love to get a squad sight shot at you, but it doesn't look like that's in the cards. So what we should do instead, then, is get to the best available cover and put you on Overwatch. I hope it's worth it. Settle down, Neil Patrick Harris, man. What's you getting all getting all jumpy, man? Oh, we do have a shot. 66% is not great. Don't want to use stasis on this guy. Could use inspire. Ah, that's intriguing. You know what? Yeah, I think this is time. Let's inspire. I give you strength. You give me strength too, Neil Patrick Harris. Johnny Rico, I give you strength. And Rico's like, I know you got my back, buddy. You give me strength every day. We're the best of friends, and I love you, Carl. And Carl's like, I love you too, man. I love you too. I would love to get you just completely out of line of sight, if possible. This is an implacable move, I believe. Yeah, you already moved in rapid fire. Oh, you know what? Jake Busey's untouchable. He killed a man. We can put Jake Busey wherever the hell we please. He, he can't. He literally can't be hit. He can't be struck. No mortal weapon can defeat him. No man of woman born. So yeah, that's just. Oh, we'll just stick you up here then. Assuming this misclick nightmare decides to fucking get over whatever bullshit it's got going on. And Casper Van Dien's going to get at least one damage here. Again, his advanced stock. Yep, there we go. He missed, but we still got three. Three was good enough. This gentleman has been retired. He's going to convert into full robot mode and go dashing around and try and splooge all over the map, which is not the end of the world for us. Johnny Rico's out of bullets, which is bad. Yeah, you see him, but you can't even get over here, jackass. What are you going to do? You can point at me all day. I don't even think you have a path to get over here. Unless you can jump? No. He can't even get over here. Now that he's in run mode, he's just going to run around and try and goob all over the map. All right, well, then I guess we'll uh, just rapid fire you twice, and you can enjoy some nice shotgun to the mouth. Nine damage. Man, I'm really liking armor-piercing ammo with my shotgun, guys. It's real good. It's real good. That was 24 slug-throwing damage from the monstrous Jake Busey, who now can take an implacable move back here to rejoin his buddies. Is everybody dead? <sighs> I know I wanted to bring the uh, dynamic trio, the three amigos, Dizzy, Rico, and Ace, but uh, honestly, I feel like Carl, Rico, and Ace... They're really holding it down. Casper Van Dien, you're going to reload, and we're going to take a turn to just recover here. We're not on a time limit. I'm going to make sure everybody gets reloaded back to full fighting trim before we go mess with any more enemies. We've downed four. We know there are nine on the map, and one of them is at least an Archon. It's killing time. Moving to Overwatch. So who's going to... Uh, you know what? We should do this one... Okay, so we're going to do one move at a time. 
you got oh, these multi-level maps, guys. There. Come on, XCOM. I'm expecting better. Don't make every final battle merely a struggle to not get somebody killed because of a misclick. If the if the final whatever the final encounter looks like has got this same sort of thing going on, my salt levels, oh, they're gonna be real high. So I don't want to take. I'm just gonna. You know what? I may just advance under the cover of Overwatch here. We do have a domination available, which is why I feel like Neil Patrick Harris is probably the best possible choice for spawning a new pod. And Johnny Rico has the dash auto overwatch ability. So let's just go ahead and have him move to here. Location confirmed. This is standard advancing tactics, man. We're moving through like a squad of Marines Standing. sweeping the streets of Fallujah. Although I'm sure they have way better tactics for checking corners and covering blind spots and making sure nobody gets killed. I'm just an idiot who knows nothing about tactics or strategy. I'm playing a video game too, so it's not really important if these guys die. I mean, it'll make me salty because everything makes me salty, but... Nobody's actually going to be killed when I fuck up. A single grenade could completely solve this problem. One grenade destroys that turret entirely. Tempted to just blow it up. We got a plasma blaster. I mean, we also have a haywire protocol. It's off cooldown. We're probably not going to get a chance to use it again. I think it's worth a shot. Even if we only shut it down, that's something. Which is probably what we're going to try and do. 72% chance to take control of it. That's real tempting. I mean, that's a pretty good shot. Would I take a 72% shot at this? Okay, here's how I'm going to make this decision. Would I take a 72% shot at this unit if I knew that shot was going to kill it? And the answer is yes, I would. All right, for once, Johnny Rico, why is it, Rico, that when we need you to really succeed at something, you never succeed? When it doesn't really matter and we're sort of gambling for fun, you don't just succeed, you knock it completely the fuck out of the park. Why can you never knock it the fuck out of the park when it actually really matters? Johnny Rico is the A-Rod. All right, I'll go. He's the A-Rod of XCOM. That's, that's the best way I can describe him. The man can't do shit unless you're up by five games. You know, if you're up five runs in the eighth inning, he'll find a way to get three at-bats in the last two and hit six home runs somehow. Multiple home runs at bat. At, A-Rod is only good when you're winning. If it's a 1-1 game in the bottom of the ninth with bases loaded, A-Rod's going to fucking strike out. But if you're up, you know, seven to nine, or if you're up like seven to two in the fifth inning and it's a slam dunk victory game, A-Rod will hit like five dingers. That's Johnny Rico. He's he's the Aramis Ram was it not Aramis Ramirez? The Ar Stepping off. This is A Rod's first name. It's Rodriguez, I know. I wanted to say Aramis Ramirez, but he played third base for the Cubs. Anyway, he's my A Rod. Johnny Rico may have a little less Hep C. That's probably what Johnny Rico has going for. So Jake Busey to there is not a terrible move, although I feel like we're getting a little strung out, and we should probably kill this turret since I do have it under control, but I think that has that is a duration, right? Or does it or does it? I mean it doesn't have any countdown time or anything. Will this go away? I've never actually successfully hacked a turret before, which is why I'm a little confused. We we have never found ourselves in this situation. Let's go on Overwatch. Just in case. Casper Van Dien, we're going to advance you forward, and we'll see whether or not we get to keep this turret. <sighs> XCOM, your misclickery bullshit targeting thing. That. It's like there's a layer below the layer that we're on, and it keeps trying to make me move down to go down one tile to a tile that doesn't actually exist. Still hacked. So clearly this has a chance to wear off. We should eliminate the turret then. This is not eternal. All right, that's fine. That's, that's basically the information we were looking for. Let's just have Jake Busey kill it. Jake Busey double rapid fire at 92%. This turret is probably done. Actually, one shot killed it, I think. Yep, yeah, you didn't even need a second one. Goddamn, Jake Busey, you're the world's greatest man. Yeah, you heard me, Jake Busey, world's greatest man. I really feel that he is. Also, why did Jake Busey not get an implacable move? Did it not count because that guy's technically on our team? If not, that's actually really funny. Be like, sorry, you can't get an implacable, untouchable move off killing one of your own units, which is not only amusing, but also sensible. All right, Rico, I am going to have you dash here. Rico will go on Overwatch, so it doesn't matter. We're fine. 
It's the guys that are over there. We saw them earlier. We got the sneak peek preview here. Oh, hello. Where did you come from? Uh, excuse me, but I don't remember a Viper being authorized to operate in this zone. I did not authorize this. That is not good. Yeah, I tend to agree. That is not good. So what have we got? A Viper and an Andromedon who are now active. They're not going to get to do anything because they did wander into us on their turn. We're going to have some Overwatch. Another one damage from the amazing Johnny Rico. Shot failed to connect. So that Viper is quite worrisome. The Andromedon is also worrisome, but for an entirely different reason. Can we even get over there? Or is this going to be just a long-range gunfight? It's looking like this is going to be a long-range gunfight. I don't want to mind control a Viper. Can the Beam of Terrible Power... Yep, all right. So, yep. Neil Patrick Harris, Beam of Terrible Power, please. Oh, I'll poke him. I'll stroke him with my Beam of Terrible Power. Here it comes. And Viper stroked right to shit out of existence. So much for you. Your beam of terrible power has once again delivered the goods. Um, this may seem like an odd choice, but I think it's the right choice. So, blaster bomb. I want this man's cover gone. And then we're going to send good old Jake Busey over there. Hopefully what will happen, Busey will be able to rapid fire double shot kill him. And the only reason I used the blaster bomb there is I didn't have another effective way of destroying that guy's cover. So the blaster bomb is off the table, which is probably suboptimal, but at, after these guys are dead, I think there's really only two enemies left on the map. Also, this man is going to be completely fucked. Or not. Jake, you're going to need a critical here, buddy. You have a good chance of getting it. Okay, well, all right then. I said you needed the critical. What did you do? You delivered the critical. So Jake Busey has now become implacable and untouchable. And I'm not sure we need him to move. In fact, I, I kind of want... Oh, I was going to say I want this guy to shoot at him, but now that I think about it, that guy can't shoot at shit. He doesn't have a gun anymore. He's just got to walk around and blob all over the map. Moving to position. So he's just going to be wandering over in that direction through our little shooting gallery of death here. We're probably going to not have an opportunity to pick up this loot, and I don't even give a shit. So, yeah, you know, there goes our friend Goblin all over the map. Man, he ran straight through the walls. He's like Homer Simpson in Japan. And now he's in full cover, so he's going to be considerably more difficult to hit. He ain't that difficult to hit, though. Um, you know, Patrick Harris, let's, let's see what you, your shots are like. You got the blue screen rounds. 93%. All right, well, this guy's a robot now. Go ahead and take this shot. That's pretty good. Or you could just straight up murder him. That's the other thing that'll happen. And, I mean, that that's actually quite nice. So Neil Patrick Harris puts one in his eye and just, he's like, fuck it, Pete. I'll just, let, let, you want me to just kill him? He's like, I, I can just kill the guy if you want. I'm on it. I don't have to try and soften him up or anything. I mean, if you want, I'll just, I'll just murder him. It's fine. It's Overwatch. I actually wanted you to reload, not go on Overwatch, but I hit the wrong button. Whatever you say. That's okay. We'll take another turn. It's fine. It does two things for us. One, it gives us an opportunity to reset our cooldowns. We're not on the time limit, so taking our time. There's no disadvantage. It makes sure we're at full fighting effectiveness. Costs us nothing to take our time. And now comes... Yeah, I don't even give a shit. We lost some trivial loot, uh, which we didn't need and probably would have forgotten to install at the best of opportunities. So here's what we're going to do then. Johnny Rico's coming up to the, theoretically to the rooftop, assuming I can figure out how to target the rooftop. And we should be able to see into this room now. We still can't see any enemies, huh? All right, well, I did not expect that. But I don't have a problem with it, assuming we can get Jake Busey right over there. here. I want to have the high ground. I'm going, I'm coming at this Obi-Wan style. I'm, eh, it's like Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Jin, whatnot. He, I mean, Qui-Gon taught him, you take the high ground. And Obi-Wan's like, I've got the high ground. And then he's going to leap off of his floating magma pod thing and get his arms and legs chopped off because you know, we have the high ground. I, I sincerely hope that's the way this works. I hope our high ground advantage lets us do the leg chopping. We could send Jake Busey crashing through this window, which would almost certainly trigger a pod. It does forego the high ground, but these guys are like... I mean, we could tell where they're at. They're right there. One, two, three. Because we can't stand in those tiles, so we know right where they are. If we come to here, we could rapid fire one of them. 
Neil Patrick Harris backs it up with probably a Void Rift. All right, yeah, let's activate him. I'm, I'm okay with this. And now. So the abuse is loose, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody's about to get abused. This is actually quite good for us. The fact that these are codexes. I'm saying, Pete, that's that's terrible. You don't want codexes, but we've got this codex shit totally on farm. We've got that problem. That's one problem that isn't really a problem at all, thanks to Neil Patrick Harris. And to a lesser extent, Casper Van Dien. So we can only hit two with a Void Rift. That's totally acceptable. Yep, okay. So we dropped the Void Rift there. Don't know what this is going to do to that Archon. Mind control here would be furiously awesome, you know. If you just, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there, buddy. But maybe mind control one of these guys would be real handy. All right, it's time. Neil Patrick Harris has gone into Santa Claus mode. He's got a gift for you, my friend. You are disoriented and ruptured, and he's also got a gift for you. Oh, don't think Santa Claus forgot you, my little Codex friend. Except Santa Claus totally forgot you. That's not good. Was hoping, hoping Santa Claus would forget her. So we're going to Capacitor Discharge then. Ugh, this is not fantastic. This guy is disoriented. We will need to get a kill with Jake Busey in order to keep him safe. I don't really think that's out of the question though. So where's my Capacitor? No, not Scanning Protocol. Not Run and Gun Blitz, although that could theoretically be useful. We're going to do this. So we could, okay, we go for the Capacitor Discharge. This should Damn kill everything. one clone and it's going to disorient the other clone. So we'll have two disoriented troopers. That one did not take damage or get disoriented somehow. Brilliant. Ah, okay. Well, uh, to say that I'm a little salty about that is a dramatic understatement. So we're going to have to run and gun. I think we use our regular run and gun here. Set him up. We do down. still have our blitz run and gun as well. I'm going to bring you over here. You're going to rapid fire and kill this codex, I'm assuming. You should not. This should... Okay, can't miss. Double hundred percent. So that codex is dead. Didn't even need the second shot. Jake Busey is a remarkable man, and now he's implacable. He's also implacable and unhittable. I'd like to throw out there. So what we're gonna do with Jake Busey is bring him up here and make him the attractive target. Assuming I can stop mis on your order. the misclick opportunities on this map. I am not happy with this map at all. I really, really hope whatever comes after this, because there's no way this is the actual last mission. I thought this might be the last mission, but there's no way this is it. So what are you going to do while disoriented? Run away. Nope, he's going to zip around back and forth. You're going to teleport, take a shot at Jake Busey, and miss because he's untouchable. Nope, going to shoot at Neil Patrick Harris. Nope, going to empty our weapons of bullets. Ah, eh, okay. Um, all things considered, that definitely could have gone worse. So where do we want... I mean, I really kind of want Jake Busey to kill the Archon. Because we got other things we can do to deal with this bitch. Disabling Neil Patrick Harris's weapon, this is not a significant problem for a man like Neil Patrick Harris. All right, We're going to have him get the hell out of here. We're going to jump out of a window. There's our Archon friend, so now we know where he is. And then I think what we're going to do here is just go ahead and... Insanity will kill you? Yes, it will. So will Soulfire, though. Soulfire, you know, we don't need the extra damage. Two, uh, two to four is not enough, though. Two, two could be. We're gonna okay. We're going for the soul fire. Don't take chances, Pete. Now is not the time to. to oh, I'm sure we'll get a three. I mean, two thirds of the time it does enough damage. This is not the time to take chances on something that works two thirds of the time. This is the time to do the thing that works every time. Okay, so I got one. Um, I'm pretty sure we're just gonna run around this corner and shoot this archon in the face. Can we figure out exactly which tile the Archon is in? Because it'll be the one we can't stand in. Okay, so he's in this tile right there. This way, okay, we'll do this, and then if it fails, we still have Johnny Rico for backup. So let's bring Jake Busey okay. around here. There's our Archon friend. Jake Busey's going to rapid fire and kill him. Ah, uh, rapid fire, possibly the greatest ability in the game. And 15 damage. Talk about the mango chutney. Jake Busey has been in a chutney manufacturing fucking fury this entire mission. There's mango chutney all over the place. We got all of the chutney. Hashtag give me the chutney. 
All right, so uh, yeah, let's just bring Casper Van Dien over here. And next turn, we'll have him hack the thing. Pretty sure every enemy is dead. We have killed nine. This is going to do its thing. It should hit no one. Everybody made it out of the deal in safety. We're cool. All right, Casper, you want to... Well, uh, let's have you reload and then hack the thing. Hack the old workstation here. If we could get a plus 20 hacking bonus off of this workstation and actually get it to work, that would be amazing. Going into the final mission with this... Oh, there we go. And we can't fail to do it. Enemy protocol. Soldier's hacking stat permanently increased. No chance to fail. Yeah, I'm going to have 185 tech score going into the final mission. Totally cool with that. Reduce the cost of contact for a nearby region by 50%. Boy, that, yeah. 20 intel that we would save making contact with a region that no longer matters. Way better than higher tech score. Especially considering it has a 40% chance of success. That makes literally zero sense. But now Casper Van Dien is truly becoming Hack the planet. Hugh Jackman. Status confirmed. Also, we we're done, I think. Yeah, so that was just like a nice little... That was basically the uh, nice little lime wedge that we bit in after the tequila shot of this mission. It was like, oh, by the way, yeah, how about this? You took that uh, You took that Jack Daniels shot? Here's a nice little chaser. Some delicious, cool beer. 14 enemies killed. Nobody even got shot at. Did we even get shot at? I'm not sure if we even got fired upon. Oh, what's this thing? All right, so the Lotus Flower of Death has been converted into suddenly the Lotus Flower of Good. And it's going to broadcast our message of hope and loveliness and goodness across the planet and completely kill every Advent Trooper, I guess. Yep, well, we've shut down troopers and mechs worldwide. Has the perimeter, this is not going to inspire well done, confidence yes, in the peoples the of our world. Suddenly, everybody they thought was protecting and defending them Status. just drops dead. Did it work? This would be like if every oh, cop on the planet just suddenly died. Breakthrough will be available to all citizens immediately. Mm -hmm. we go live to the oh, hey, it's John Lennon. He's back. Fellows. What's up, obvious thin man? For 20 years, we have put our trust... In Advent, and for 20 years, Advent, I have very clearly been a thin man the entire time. How the fuck did no one ever say anything? Look at my neck for crying out loud. Today, that trust, that belief has been rewarded. Advent oh, we're corrupting his message, I see. Across the world, carrying the greatest gift from the elder. Death. A revolutionary hey, take this. We pulled a Malcolm Reynolds on you. Can't stop the signal. So much. This is an end yeah, right now, I'm going to have to go with Wrath. That's line in that movie, by the way. The beginnings of a new tomorrow. You're yeah, not really making your case here, John Lennon. You should look behind you, dude. You're you're like everybody in every horror movie ever. Just just look over your shoulder, man. Oh, there you go. See, now it's too late, though. Damage is done. You should have looked sooner. Just like every horror movie ever. Well, time to go full thin, man. Or they're just going to let John Lennon get torn apart by a crowd. Kind of wanted to see that, that scene. Could you have maybe run like an extra nine seconds instead of smash cutting to black? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded watching John Lennon get torn apart. Well, they are the greatest trio of badasses to ever exist, except for, you know, Izzy wasn't among them. And I really feel like Dizzy belonged amongst the greatest trio of badasses ever to exist. But we really did kind of need Neil Patrick Harris on that one. We're not slighting Dizzy's chops. She's still as combat effective as ever. What we're slighting is just she not necessarily being the right tool for this job. I mean, it doesn't matter how awesome a crescent wrench is. You're not going to use it to drive screws because it's, it's going to be really bad at it. I mean, you could pound them in with an edge of the crescent wrench, but ideally you would just go, well, maybe I'll use a screwdriver. Probably better. So we picked up like some trivial bullshit that doesn't even matter. So what now? is the question. I thought that was going to be like the last mission. It said we were locked in, but what are we supposed to do now? Like, if I go to the bridge, am I going to get a cutscene telling me where to go and what to do? This is it, ah, Commander. okay. Yes, it's in fact, is the answer. An this, once and for all. So, Heavy Mac, a sector pod, man, Muton, Berserker, Faceless, Archon, Elite, Gatekeeper, Viper, Avatar, 34 enemies. Wow. Alright, well, that's going to be a tough row to hoe, but that's a row we're going to have to hoe next time. 
If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot. And if you'd like to see our assault on the 34 aliens in the final base, full of misclick bullshittery, I'm almost going to be absolutely positive. That's going to be screamingly frustrating. So, hey, if you're interested in watching me be salty at the uh, click mechanics, feel free to subscribe as well. We've right now, as far oh, as Bradford with his patented last second drop in. Through this gateway of theirs and shut the Avatar project down for good. If our past experiences are any indication, our past experiences with traveling through some mystery through portal to an alien world, ahead. Bradford. How much gin have you had today? Because I don't remember that ever happening in history, but maybe you remember an alternate history, one that was inspired by copious quantities of some sort of hallucinogenic booze, Jägermeister maybe, or uh, I don't know. You've been chasing the green fairy a little bit. Is that, is that what it is? Possibly that. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.